what what the the net effect of that is that you know you see somebody from different sides and 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 you're going to be able to connect and empathize with somebody maybe somebody who you don't necessarily agree with the things that they've done in unexpected ways because you might have been in that situation sure ladies and gentlemen we have a very very special treat for you today if you are on if you are watching HBO Max right now, the one thing you need to be watching is the Golden Boy two-part documentary. Saba and I just checked it out a couple weeks ago, and we have the production company as well as the director of the film, Fernando Vienna, a.k.a. the V-Man, according to Archie and our good friend Archie Gipps, back with us here on Zero Dark Nerdy Podcast. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Yeah. Great to be here. Thank you. Way. Of course. I just want to say, let me say one thing before oh, we start right asking ahead. questions. Right ahead. I am historic. I'm a huge boxing fan. Mm -hmm. My growing up, my brother-in-law, um, he, I, you know, I used to go over to my sister's house and we would watch boxing coming up. So I've been following Oscar de la Hoya since not necessarily since Barcelona 92, but definitely shortly thereafter, I would say roughly 95, 96. And then obviously throughout the remainder of his career up through the, the Pacquiao fight. So this definitely came as a, you know, we had all seen a lot of the stuff that had come out through the media or whatever, but getting a glimpse uh, into the, the, the golden boy persona in hearing it in, in Oscar's own words. I mean, just the idea behind this thing and everything that you guys did, the way that you shot it, where Oscar was always in black and white reality. and just everything about it was, uh, it was amazing. And I just want to say that before we start asking questions, how I'm a huge fan of unrealistic ideas and Archie, you know, I give you a lot of shit, man, but <laughs> I'm telling you, it's getting to the point now where it's like, when you see unrealistic and unrealistic ideas production, you know that it's going to be a banger. And I just want to tell you that we're huge fans of you guys, Fernando, huge fan of your project. And I just wanted to say that before we get started, how, how amazing I thought it was. And just thank you guys for being on the show today. No, it's super kind of you. Uh, I think Fern, you might be muted. Um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, this is this is one that's at, at, when you run a production company and you have to oversee a lot of projects. You always you always have the highest expectation for your projects, but they're only as good as the people that are running it or directing it. And the potential for this documentary, we always thought it was really high. And Fernando took it to a level that blew my expectations away. I mean, so far past, I always thought it'd be a great doc, but to the level and the expertise and the craftsmanship that he put into this, you know, obviously we're, we're helping and David Wendell, who is our head of docs every second of the way was working with Fernando, but it was really, I mean, a testament to Fernando, his vision, his passion for the project that, that just turned it into a great project into a phenomenal project. Yeah. You know, um, before I started, um, I was uh, doing a lot of research and I was like, all right, what, 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 what projects has Unrealistic done? So I was like, oh, well, I'll start with McMillions, right? And I saw it and I was like, oh, man. I, well, first of all, I, has, I, I, I have to aim higher than that, right? You know, because I'm, I'm always trying to aim high. But I was like, that's really, that's really good filmmaking right there I was like oh shit what are, what are we gonna do how are we gonna do this right but um you know I wanted to keep the the bar of unrealistic work you know I wanted to meet that bar and hopefully you know maybe even help elevate it you know because uh you know um from the very beginning I knew how serious what serious filmmakers they were did yeah. Fern did you know Oscar prior to the start of production on this like, like personally or yeah, what? yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, personally. no, 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 not at all. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a real boxing fan either. Oh. You know, I grew up watching boxing, but I, you know, I didn't know much about his, his, his uh, career. Fun fact. I didn't even know about the, the photographs. Okay. The, the fishnet fo photographs. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was like, guys, have you heard about this? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, we know all about it. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, so for me it was like a big discovery, the whole project about him and his life and everything. I mean, I didn't we didn't know I knew about him, of course, as like a celebrity. I'm not a big boxing fan either. Mm-hmm. Really, the person on our team that was the knowledgeable one when it came to boxing was Mario Lopez. Yeah. Uh, right. Who was a great, you know, he was our partner on this, his VMR, his company with Jeff Stearns. He knew every single fight, every Oscar. And he's obviously great friends with Oscar, but he would be like, oh, yeah, that fight and this round and that. And so he was our resident expert if we ever needed, you know, one as far as looking at it from that perspective of like, is this going to entertain the boxing fan? Because we knew it would entertain the non-boxing fan based on Fernando and I not really being uh you know huge boxing fan. Guys, I watched every single one of those fights live in real time so watching this like took me back on a journey through my Mm. my my you know formative years and in my 20s so it was amazing let me add brian i know you want to jump in here but i got to ask this question look you you fernando you filmed it in such a way that you allow the the audience the viewer to make a decision about how they feel about Oscar de la Hoya in the end, right? Like, I I think all good filmmakers, especially when you're a documentary filmmaker, you don't want to slant it and and sort of nudge the audience in the right way. Was it your intention to have people walking away asking themselves, wow, is Oscar de la Hoya a scumbag? Is he a tortured soul? Is he misunderstood? Like, there's all these questions that I had. Was that your intention to sort of let the, the audience make their decision and to film it in a way where they could almost go any direction? I, that's a banger question. That's like the question at the heart of this whole matter, right? It's like, how do you present Oscar to the world, right? In, 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 in this documentary. And, um, you know, I, just one thing you said that I don't necessarily agree with. I think a lot of documentaries right to today do want you to feel one way or another. Right. Right. They do have an agenda, whether it's, you know, a topical, documentary about you know a me too movement or something like that or you you know um so i and i do think a lot of movies about celebrities do do treat their celebrities you know differently right they don't put them under that harsh of a microscope right um so there's that right uh and we and I say we because this was a group effort, right? We thought we had a lot of discussions about everything to do with the creative process and everything with me and Archie and 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 David Wendell and and the rest of the creative crew. So it was always a group group effort, right? How do we get to the to to the to the heart of this? But um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to I don't want to skew anybody's opinion. I, I I wanted I wanted everybody to be able to speak their mind, right? And some people have commented that, you know, there's uh, this this project humanizes Oscar to a certain extent. Mm. And I find that to be a really curious statement because I don't, I, if you told me right now to humanize somebody, I wouldn't know how to do it. Yeah. You, you know, like, I, how do you humanize a human, right? So so I think I think what they're responding to is the fact that we're not judging Oscar necessarily. We're letting him speak. We're letting yeah. him kind of tell the story, but we're also letting his kids tell tell their stories, and his we're letting family, his yeah. father, his father, and his ex partners, and people you know that that you know have a more complicated version of who Oscar is, sure. right? To tell, and I think, and I think what it is is you paint a fuller portrait of the person, right? And and uh, and and when you paint a more detailed, full, fuller portrait of somebody. I guess people take that as humanizing, right? Right. Because I think what what the the net effect of that is that you know you see somebody from different sides, and 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 you're going to be able to connect and empathize with somebody, maybe somebody who you don't necessarily agree with the things that they've done in unexpected ways because you might have been in that situation. Sure. And maybe you don't want to tell anybody, but maybe you behave similarly, right? Or whatever. Uh, but I do think that. Um, we never wanted to judge Oscar because that would have been, you know, that would have been easy to do. Right. You know, like uh, he wasn't around to raise his kids and all that, but, there, but he had a very 
complicated, difficult, traumatic upbringing. Yes. And, and, you know, he, I mean, you saw him in the ring, you saw those fights. He was a tremendous fighter, but he also, uh, you know, he, he provided generational wealth for his family. Right. And, and, you know, he's been retired for, you know, 15, 15 years, years now or so. Yeah. yeah. And, and he's probably doing better now financially than he did then. Like how many boxers can say that? Right. Not many. And, and, but this is a kid who didn't even know about at 18 years old, how to save money. Right. So while he was in the ring, so all those, all that time he was learning about life. He was learning about how to become a businessman and, and taking his lumps and, um, yeah, it's a it's a big story, and and you know, we wanted to uh, we wanted to be very specific about how how to tell it. Yeah. But to speak to what Fernando is saying, though, I mean, the the humanizing of it, it's really you know, Fernando asked fantastic questions that Oscar gave honest answers to, but the really brave thing on Oscar's part was allowing Fernando to interview the other people in his life mm -hmm. and got get not get the not most flattering you know statements out of them sure. and that's really the humanizing is oscar being trusting us enough and really that was mark Wahlberg. you know my partner basically was like hey tell the truth man let the truth come out and and you know let it it's going to all be good and it, and it has been because people again people are willing to forgive you know if you're out there and you're honest about your real self and so i think that a lot of that's what speaks to a lot of why people think this is a really special documentary because it isn't a puff piece. You know, it's not like Fernando said, like a celebrity or a sports doc where you're getting bits and pieces, but you're not really getting, you're not feeling a specific, uh, you're, you're not torn. Like, wow, I don't know how to feel about this person. Usually like, wow, this is the greatest person ever. And right. I think that, you know, Fernando and the whole team obviously did a great job in, just let putting all the truth out there and letting letting the audience make their decision. Hmm. Yeah, that that was one of the first things I noticed when I when I texted Saba, I said, "Have you seen this yet?" And he was like, "No, not yet." He was on vacation, getting ready to come back. He's like, "I'm gonna check it out as soon as I get back." And I told him, I was like, "This is probably one of the most honest, boxing. straightforward documentaries I've seen in a very long time." And not just from the person that it's about, but just like you said, the interviews, you could tell like there was no holds barred. It was like, "Hey." Give us your take. Here's I, I we want to see every side of the story. To let it go. There wasn't anything partial to it, which to me made it more special because, you know, like Sabah and I, we talk about this all the time uh, on a lot of our episodes. Nobody's perfect. We we all make mistakes, right? And I mean, some that we can live with, some that we regret. And I mean, you you could tell he has obviously a lot of regrets, you know, especially when it comes to some of his kids and things like that. But seeing that honesty and that openness not just come from him but from the others around him as well was very special in that. And I got to say, I, I, you know, I try to keep an eye on just the little things. And I have to say, Fernando, the, when you were in, in, like when you're watching the documentary and you, when you're introducing people and they look like title, like fight, like fight match cards, I thought that was just like a very super nice touch on there. So, you know, I just got to applaud you on that. It's just, and to me, I'm like, I'm, I'm all about the little things and little things like that, especially growing up, like, like Saba did at boxing was predominant in our household as much as we could afford it, or at least, you know, steal somebody else's pay-per-view password or what, whatever it was uh, we would do. So, um, you know, with that, with that being said, was this originally the statute of limitations has passed, <laughs> right? Right. And this was also the eighties too. So those, those times have, have been long gone. Um, with that being said, when, when you were editing this and everything else, was there a part that you just said, Hey, this is going to be part one or part two. Was there originally a plan to maybe do a four part 30 minutes long? What was that process like when it came to, okay, is this going to be a two part, you know, hour, hour and a half? Or can we make this a four-part, half-hour documentary? Well, I think originally, um, I, I I wasn't part of the development, mm -hmm. right? So, so, and Archie can speak to this. Obviously, there it, it, there there were more episodes in the original kind of com, conceptualization of the project, um, and then when uh, when I when I when I started, it was for whatever reason it had been brought down to like a 190 minute film right 
Mm-hmm. And then we uh, we spent some time writing out the the uh, essentially a story map treatment for both episodes that showed uh, the arc of the story and and the characters and 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 you know to a certain extent like what a cliffhanger is going to be at the end of the first episode. Um, but also it helped organize our ideas where we realized that the first episode was more about the trauma that Oscar endured, right? When he was young. And the second episode was more about the pain that he inflicts on his loved ones and the people in his life. Right. Right. And, um, and it's not just that, but that was kind of like the organizing principle of it all. Right. And then, um, and then that made sense to us. And then, you know, from, uh, it was really useful to uh, go through that exercise to um, then understand that we had two parts. That this was essentially a two part. Uh, uh, if we were gonna go like 90 minutes, it was gonna be two parts or we could split it up in three. But, but this was kind of like the amount of story that we wanted to investigate, right? So uh, yeah, it, it, you know, it takes a little bit of a, of prep to get there. Sorry, sorry for that. I was gonna say a lot of it also is the way HBO you know, they had tremendous success with the Tiger Doc, which was a two-parter. Mm, yeah. So they really encouraged us to to go with that two-parter as well, similar to that. Okay. Okay. Now, in terms of, of your connection, you know, how, how did it all come about? Because, Fernando, I know you got, you know, 28 editing credits to your name. You've done a couple documentaries yourself. Is, is Did you already have, you know, as far as you two, Archie and Fernando, a relationship beforehand where you were just like, Hey, maybe we should give this guy the reins on this role. I'd love to hear how this all came about. Cause as I, I mentioned during the pre-show, we saw the beginnings of it in season one of wall street. Right. Um, you know, where, where, uh, it was Mario Lopez and, and Oscar coming over, you know, pitching to you and Mark about the idea of the documentary and then seeing it come to fruition, you know, especially after this, when we first met RT, for those of you maybe just tuning in, that was our first episode we did was talking about season one of Wall Street. So I'd love to hear about your backstory and how you guys got connected and all this. Yeah, we started to like, like exactly like you said, we started developing this. I guess it must have been 2020, right? Because it was during the beginning of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I met Oscar over a Zoom with Mark and, and Mario, and that's documented on the first season of Wall Street. And so we started, you know, obviously legal things and getting into putting the deal together. And then David Wendell, again, you'll hear that name a lot. Uh, he put together a deck, uh, which basically was pitching what we thought, what our vision was for the documentary without what we normally do at our company is David and I talk through the store and we put together a deck that we use to a attract either buyers or directors. If we feel we need to direct, attach a director in advance with this, we felt that you know, Oscar's story was so strong that we could probably um, sell it directly to a buyer without having a director attached and then have the buyer say, oh, here's some directors we'd love to work with. And that's sort of what happened. We had a couple of names that we wanted, but um, uh, Bentley over at HBO, um, she was working with Fernando and is like, hey, we're working this with this guy on Dear Rider, which was a uh, a documentary about Burton, um, the snowboard. Uh, why am I skip spacing on his first name? Jake Jake Burton. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, which is a phenomenal doc. If you haven't seen it, check that out as well. And so we watched the doc, um, and we dug it, and we met Fernando, and we thought he was awesome, and we had Fernando meet Oscar, and they two hit it off, and that's kind of the way from my point of view how it went down maybe fernando there was a different you know you saw it from a different perspective but that was no it's pretty pretty much the same the only thing i would add to it is that i actually texted bentley after i saw the tiger doc and uh you know was just texting her ab- uh, about it and um and you know i know people have issues with that doc but i really love it you, you, you know um with the limitations that that they had to work with i thought yeah. it was fantastic so i was just chatting to her about it and that that's what she brought up um de la jolla the interesting thing interesting thing about that is that i was living in east la in 2020 right because my wife um she had a house there so it's like blocks away from where oscar was running around and and his gym and everything so uh it was it was 
it was really interesting in that sense, right? Because I was immersed in that culture. You know, I was going to those restaurants. I was you walking jog- my dog, you know. You jogging the same path that Oscar <laughs> no, <I'm jogging. laughs> Yeah, well, I was more in Boyle Heights, but, but yeah, but it's still, it's East LA and, uh, and um, but yeah, I met, I met David, I met Archie and, uh, and then, and then of course I went, I went to meet, meet Oscar and, and that meeting with Oscar, you, you know, it was, uh, yeah, it was interesting. We talked about if there was anything that was off limits and he said there wasn't, you know, there wasn't. That's awesome. It was. Yeah. And he, you know, and he kept his word. A lot of people say that, but then they'll be like, Hey, sure. you know, you know, don't, you know, I don't want to talk about that, but you know, he talked about everything. It wasn't was, always comfortable, but yeah. 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 I mean, for him though, it was like, it, you know, he kind of talked about it or somebody talked about it. It was almost like a, like a cleansing for him to let the world know, you know, in his own words, right. This, this whole golden boy thing, it's fucking bullshit. Right. And you know, the reality is right. The relationship with his mother very back and forth, right? I love her, but there was sort of, um, you know, some challenges there when she would get upset with him. His father has his own challenges. There's a cultural challenge. Him and his brother had a weird relationship. Like, just the fact that, and in, in then the kids at the end, in the second episode, right, where, you know, he sort of manifested the things that happened in his life maybe was a result of, of how he his relationship was early on with his kids. I mean, the fact that he was just open to talk about all that the fact that you said it Fern that he was willing to let other people provide dialogue and narrative on the things that he did ex-spouses all that I mean look it's as raw as it gets but you know you got to give Oscar a lot of credit because he is a very um, charismatic individual you know what I mean like when he's on there's nobody that that's better but he 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 washed all that away and was just very sort of honest, open and attentive to the camera. And it was look, it's one of a kind, man. You guys did a phenomenal job. There's nothing else I can say. We had, well, just when, if you watch the doc, obviously you see these incredible interview setups that Fernando and his DP set up. They're beautiful. The Bob Arum is like, they're awesome. They're, they're yeah. incredible like tableaus and they're beautiful. And that was originally at the beginning HBO wanted us to have those beautiful for Oscar too. And Fernando, again, to his credit, we saw he was starting doing some interviews with, with Oscar and I, we watched some of the dailies and I, I turned to Dave, I'm like, Holy shit. This is like, this is like a therapy session. This is incredible. Like the way that Fernando shot this, it's so intimate and raw. Like, and Fernando of course was like, yeah, let, this is what I want to use. And this is, that way it feels so much more intimate and and personal with Fernando where everything else is much bigger. All the other interview setups are there's more distance and it's beautiful in color. And so that was like, that blew me away when I saw that interview for the first time, because it stripped away a lot of the pretense because Oscar is a, is a, he's a promoter. So he's got all that bluster and sort of machismo going on and to strip that away in these interviews is absolutely the secret sauce, I think to the, to the project. Yeah, and the process lasted over a year. You know, there were like thirty interviews, fifty hours of combined footage, and um, you know, as we learned new information from other people that were interviewed, then we then I'd go back because all the interviews were one on one. It was it was just me and him, and then and I would ask him about new stuff that came up, and and so it was always evolving. It was always evolving, but. Uh, you know, I just, um, I knew he was highly media trained. I mean, he's been in front of the camera since he was like 16, 17 years old. Sure. And, but what I didn't realize that when I started was that he's, he's used to opening up to the camera, right? More so than people close in, in like his, his close family and friends. That said, I don't think he ever went through this process. Right. And I knew, I knew we couldn't have a bunch of lights and, and producers yeah. running around and, and people helping them and makeup and like, like that would have just, you would have, it wouldn't have gotten anywhere. There was just too much story to cover, too much ground to cover. And I wanted to give him like space to, um, you know, if he was in a bad mood that day, be in a bad mood that day. I don't care. Let's just roll. 
right? And see what and see what happens. And and sometimes, you know, uh, uh, that worked. That really worked, right? Like a lot of times, there's a there's a subtext of what he's saying to the things that that he that he's 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 talking about. And it's also like it's hard to get people like that off their talking points, you, you know, like people that have are used to talk are used to talking about their life story, right? It's hard to get them off their their, mm -hmm. their talking points. And I think the best way to do that is is just do it slowly and methodically, right? And um, but he was game. He was game. And I, you know, however you feel about Oscar as a person, I hope people can appreciate the fact that he did what he did. Like he went through this process and he did open up and he did allow people to uh um be totally candid about their relationship with him. And I, 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 I think it's a lot of courage. Getting Bernard Hopkins was great too, by the way. I just want to say that. Love, <laughs> love, love Bernard Hopkins, boy. And he'll tell you anything you want to hear. And, and, and that, I thought, even though he was only in a very short period, they talked about, and I don't want to give too much away because we want people to watch, but when Oscar brought Bernard Hopkins into Golden Boy, listen, that's not bullshit. The world looked at that as sort of, such a move, a smart move by Oscar. And that really changed a lot of people's opinions of him because Bernard Hopkins, that body shot, he dropped him with in the ring. I mean, that, that was the first time that people saw Oscar, you know, he was banging, ah, you know, he was crying. And he, I, you know, I don't listen, Bernard Hopkins hit me with a body shot. I'd be worse. I wouldn't get out of bed for three weeks. But the point is I, I loved that part uh, because it was, it was very real. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with it 100. percent Anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to give too much more away. Brian, you got anything else? <laughs> um, you know, just a question right here for for Fernando. So this is your your fourth film as a, a director. Uh, I believe your first one. Just look back. Is my, my first directing project was uh, was any one of us, which which is on HBO as well. That's right. So yeah, so any one of us was done in 2019, and you do this mm -hmm. one like soon after, and I know you have a couple in between. How do you feel you've grown as a director in this space? And this is the space you want to stay in because it looks like you and Unrealistic mm -hmm. have a great collaboration going on. Um, I believe mm -hmm. you have the same secretary or assistant because when I get the emails, it seems like it's coming from both your offices. So I'd love to hear about just kind of where you're at and of course upcoming projects for for you and as well as from archie with uh, unrealistic ideas well that's a great question you guys you guys have some really great questions here um i think uh tremendous like i've grown like it's it's from where like the first my first day shooting on on any one of us mm -hmm. i was like what do i do <laughs> i was like I, I i turned to, to the producer and i was like Right. Am I supposed to say some something now or just let them kind of do their thing? And he's like, we'll talk later. Just let them do their thing, right? Um, and uh, uh, so, yeah, I've come a long way. God, it's like the most important thing in life is confidence, you know? Damn right. But you, yeah, there is a little bit of fake in it till you make it, right? That, that can get you so far. But, I mean, confidence... You only get by experience and by getting knocked down, getting punched in the face, right? And like, oh, I can take it, you know, and then you get back up and and trying things. And I'm not afraid to try things. That's the one thing. I'm not afraid to try things. I'm not afraid to fall on my face. And, and um, you know, because I do try and, and create an environment, a work environment that's open and, 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 and people can just say their minds. And I love, I love collaboration, as, as Archie knows. Um, but uh, I think confidence is key, and that comes with experience. But I did come in with with a certain skill set, and that's editing, right? Yeah. Like I can I can get in the ring with anybody. I feel on, as as an editor, but uh, where aspects that I had to learn more about were, um, you know, on, on the visual side, on the graphic side, on on music side you know because i've always had input but it's never been my call right so like it's like oh shoot now this is my call like i have to be to be more um thoughtful and and specific about what i'm seeing in my head or what i'm not seeing in my head right and um and i think uh 
it's all it's an ongoing process it's an ongoing pro process and then we Archie and I were were uh went to dinner with Bentley and 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 David and Abtin a few months ago and uh yeah and and Archie did mention something which I'm not going to say here but he did mention something that I can improve on and I was like oh and I wrote I, I did write it down <laughs> but uh cuz I want to get better I want to get wow. better you know and I want and I, and I love and it sounds cheesy or whatever, but I love living in the moment, you know, and I and I love experiencing everything. And to me, direct editing is great. I love it, right? But directing is way more fun. Well, Archie's more used to, Archie, to go on, there's go more on. headaches, but it's way more fun. <laughs> Archie's used to getting feedback and constructive criticism from his business partner, so it's good to see that you're learning from that. And now you're passing that along, Arch. <laughs> well, no, I, I was going to say that. I mean, look, I. I thrive off of constructive criticism and, and Fernando to his credit is one of the few directors we've worked with that I think is at my level. Like we, I give notes and it wouldn't be like, yeah, okay, whatever. It, everything was thoughtful. I was like, okay, well, I hear you. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Like, it wasn't just like, I'm not doing these notes or it wasn't like, I'm doing all these notes. It was like, let's discuss these things. Let's make this project better together. And that, that is not an easy thing for a director. Right. Uh, trust me, I've directed projects myself. And a lot of times your ego gets in the way, a very specific vision that you have in your head for like two years and someone else comes with an idea and you're like, shit, that is a really good idea, but I don't want to change my vision. And it's like, but Fernando is always like found the right path, you know, especially we had an incredible uh, time making this film with him. And yes, to what you alluded to, we absolutely would love to, uh, to work with him again. And we have plans on, on some projects in the future that we have earmarked for Fernando. So hopefully we can get those things across the finish line. Well, that's, that's a good segue. And I don't know how much you guys can talk about it, but you know, what is next for, for you guys, for both of you? I mean, are there things that are, that are, you know, in production or near the close of production that you can share with us, either of you? And I mean, we well, know like, the strike's going on, so you may be limited yeah. to what you Exactly. So if you can't say that. anything, we understand. Right. So we get it. I'll tell you the first thing that Fernando and I have going on, which is a fantasy football league, <laughs> which will be hotly. <laughs> One of the reasons why Fernando and I get along so well is that, as you know, I'm a diehard Jets fan. Fernando, unfortunately, is a diehard Dolphins fan. So we go at it in a very playful <laughs> way uh we have we have a bet on the season i believe right i think yeah our bet is uh that uh like whoever gets more uh mvp votes tua oh, or right. uh or uh, oh, who's your quarterback who's your quarterback again i forget <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah whoever whoever gets most yeah whoever gets the guy who's the least amount of mvp exactly votes they have to pay for dinner yeah yeah so that Archie, go ahead. Finish. No, go ahead, man. Sorry. Well, we have we have we have really cool projects that you know we've started discussing with Fernando. Again, I can't because they're in the process of trying to develop and sell. We can't really get into it, but uh, they're not. I'll give you this: it's not uh, sports stocks. We we never want to pigeonhole someone. This is like an action. Uh, one is like a true crime comedic action thriller type of thing um and so just different things to not only do we want to be able to like help fernando sort of you know grow and flex his muscles in other areas we too love directors that do that because we don't want to have that rote answer like whenever we do music docs when we probably will never hire a, a director that's done a music doc before that because we want someone coming out with fresh ideas and that was again uh, excuse me, Fernando had worked on sports docs, like the the Burton doc, but it was not boxing. We knew he wasn't a massive boxing fan. Right. And to us, that was, those were pluses. Yeah, fresh eyes. Because of the way, mm -hmm. the way we wanted fresh eyes. And it was like, we knew that if we got someone, and we had people that pitched us as directors, oh my God, I love boxing. It's like, I knew this fight. I knew this. And then, you know, we were like, that's great. But what's the bigger picture? What's the story that we're trying to tell here? And so not that you couldn't have done both, but we felt obviously we, we made the right choice with Fernando on this one for sure.